Dun, 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 dun. And that's how I w ended up walking through Walmart with just one shoe. Yeah, uh, it's happened to all of us. I mean, it just happens. Uh, <laughs> so, no, so I can't go to that story. So in the news so far this week, I mean, I think the big one that most everybody's talking about is SIG Recall. Right? Wouldn't that be the one that most people are talking Sig, about? Uh, SIG has recalled the Cross Rifle, and also Smith & Wesson has recalled the... Smith & Wesson Easy, Easy Shield. Easy Shield, anything that's made between March, March 1 and October 31st. Um, you know what? Isn't that kind of like when like COVID started? Yeah, like it's basically... March yeah. to October 1, there's like... People are like, nah, I don't care. Like, <laughs> That's not the case, but it Let's see. is suspicious. Hey, it looks like on Facebook that we are actually live. Yeah. So, welcome in, everybody. Well, it says that I we're going to talk YouTube. about firearm deals and Oklahoma is Hunt Huntastic. Oklahoma is Huntastic. Last, at least last week, it was So, this was is the funny amazing. thing about hunters. They like to post that they had all this success, but they don't want to tell anyone where they went. Oh, I'll tell all everything. Secret, 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 no, secret. It's just like it's just like our Wyoming antelope hunt. Like if you email me, and I've offered my email out there, and I've already given five guys. Five guys have reached out hamburger? to me. Yeah, not a hamburger. I didn't give them a hamburger and fries and a, a shake, but they reach out to me and said. I'd love to know more about it, and I tell them everything. I just spill my guts. I don't care. <laughs> like, get everybody involved. Come I mean, on. Like, seriously, who cares? Craig Webb, yes, we're live again. We, <laughs> we tried to do live like 10 minutes ago, gotcha. but the internet was not cooperating, so here we are. Emily, yes, does Emacs Pro BTs, though, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, she knows what's up. Rob, Bobby, welcome in. All right, so you are, in fact, watching Gun Talk Live. Gun Talk Live is brought to you by Springfield Armory and by Loophold Be Relentless. It's also brought to you by uh, Ruger. ShopRuger.com has holiday deals now through December 25th. Save on Ruger knives. Those are pretty nice. I have a few. Uh, hunting gear like shooting sticks. Handy. Folding seats, clothing, and field kits, flashlights, snap caps, gun safe racks, pepper spray, Ruger branded gear like campfire mugs, blankets, and wine and pint glassware. That's fun. Uh, find that your stocking cool. stuffers on sale at Ruger, shopruger.com. Also, magazines. You can never go wrong with more 1022 magazines. Also, Sig Sauer, newest addition to the P320 line is the P320 Custom Works Studio FCU, fire control unit. Frame and trigger. The first piece in a totally customizable firearm built to work with both SIG and aftermarket performance parts and customized accessories, including grip modules, slides, barrels, and optics. Find out more at SIGSauer.com slash F-C-U. Um, it's also the last week to enter Gun Talk's Thanks giveaway. Guess what you can win? A lot of stuff. <laughs> you could win. There's two grand prizes. Daniel Defense DDM4 V7 in 5.56 NATO just a little behind the scenes. When they said they were gonna do it, we thought they were just doing the upper. And they were like, no, no, right. the whole rifle. It was like, the oh, whole thing. Whoo, whoo, whoo. You know how much that is? That's, that's, that's not an inexpensive rifle, let me tell you. Um, Holy also crap. the Brownells upper, complete upper in 300 blackout. This is the BRN 180S. If you haven't seen that, you kind of need to check it out. There's some neat things going on. It's just, it's not your regular upper. I don't have time to tell you about it right now. It pairs with the Double Star Corporation AR-15 lower, and there's also first prize winners. Timney Triggers. Yeah. That'd Hodgden. Be good. And Hodgden. Good for an eight-pound keg of Hodgden or IMR uh, propellant. So what would you what would you load with your Hodgden? If you, if you had I it and you would, had everything ready to go, what's the one I round think, you're going to start reloading? I think I would play with uh, 300 blackout, subsonic stuff. Yeah, that'd be cool. Because there's the game. I, 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 I could go on a tangent here. But <laughs> and here we go. And, here, and now we're in the middle of a tangent. <laughs> um, subsonic. The parameter is 1,100 feet per second. Right. About. But how big of a bullet can you load in there? I know, I think it was Mike McNett over at Double Tap was doing... A 240 gram yeah. bullet. It was something ridiculous. It was, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, but uh, reloading is, is getting a resurgence 
Oh, um, yeah. I mean, Especially obviously, now. ammo's hard to find. But here's but. what's happening. They're getting into reloading. They're buying up all the components now. And so now you thought that, oh, yeah, I'm going to get in reloading. I'm going to save all my brass and everything else. All that brass that you let go to waste and just threw in the bucket that's at the range, I bet you wish you had back right now. Oh, and now, I mean, yeah. think about that. So I mean, much brass. How many times did we go out to the range, picked up our brass, dumped it in the bucket, and now we're going, man, I wish I had some brass. That'd be nice. Uh, brass, if you save your brass and you, you reload, brass is about 40% of the cost of a loaded round. Really? Yeah. Sorry to break that to you. Um, Facebook doesn't look like it's working. Anyone? Anyone? Hello? <laughs> but I look good in the yeah. freeze frame. Oh, we, I, my, this is what my freeze frame looks like. <laughs> it's always something really dumb. I don't um, know. There's something screwy going on. But, uh, hey, let's get in. We've got M. Law. He's new to the channel. Um, all right. And we might be experiencing a few technical difficulties. Sorry if that's uh, happening on a YouTube it's side. Trying. It's trying. But, uh, you know... We gave away, we're giving away the Caldwell uh, earmuffs here. And Rockaway CCW1, congratulations, you win. And I'll be reaching out to you. Oh, no. Toss them I won't do that to you. So Emily nice. would be mad. Caldwell, Bluetooth. Yes, they're awesome. Ear Pro. They're great. Uh, but he says, I didn't know Gun Talk was on YouTube. When I saw this, I said, hey, that old guy sounds just like Tom Gresham. I'm <laughs> guessing... You are a rabid Gun Talk Radio. I, and if you haven't listened here lately, I'm sorry, you suck. Because <laughs> it has been like... You're missing out. The phone calls, the topics, the guests that Tom has had on the past three weeks have been It's amazing. fire. He's on fire. Yeah, I, it's always funny when I'll have conversations with people and either they're like a Gun Talk Radio listener mm -hmm. and they'll go... You guys do like videos and stuff too, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> We're or everywhere. or it's vice versa. Wait, there's a radio show called Gun Talk. <laughs> I know you guys have a YouTube channel. We're all over, and that's one of the hard things to manage. I think uh, you know in this whole operation, it's like we send them here, and then they locate something new over here. So uh, oh, we, we don't we don't care. We are we are platform agnostic. Yeah. However you want to. View us. But Facebook, uh, Texas Huntsman, uh, one of my favorites, uh, says Facebook doing Facebook. Yeah, Facebook's and, being uh, Facebook. He, right got, now. he sorry, says you guys. got Zuckerberged. You got zucked. <laughs> oh. Uh, um, so anyway, so we were, we've been talking lately. I just got back from a hunt from Oklahoma, and um, you're gonna hear it this weekend on Gun Talk Hunt podcast. Uh, retelling the story of a, a young man's largest buck that he's ever taken. And that was so cool to be a part of and, and to see how the hunt progressed. Um, I'm going to not go into details on that, but I will go into details on my hunt. And okay. I'm going to tell you right now, the rut was on fire last week. And, you know, I don't want to be that guide or the... Should have been here last week, boy. Should, it should, was so good. Yeah, should have been here last week, man. That is the saying I hate the most. But seriously, you should have been in Oklahoma, at least southwestern Oklahoma, <laughs> last week. So I took my buddy, Thomas Allen, who I've known from the fishing industry, took him out. And I kid you not, it was on fire, and I had him hunt a way that he's never hunted before. Out in the wide open. It's not, not run sitting and gun. in the stand. Not sitting in, don't sit in the stand. Yeah. You go to a location, you spot the your you spot the deer, and then you move. And it's on you to play. He had never the, done that. Never done that. You've got to play the wind, you've got to play the terrain, and you gotta play the buck. Yeah. That's what you gotta do. That's the game. So I'm sitting there and I'm watching a small buck. I've never hunted this place before, but I've hunted coyotes here, and I'm like, that's a great vantage point to see. You know, deer coming out. Mm -hmm. Well, I spot this buck, and I'm like, "Oh man!" I was like, "I gotta, I gotta make a move on him." Yeah. You know, it's he's too good. So I start, I start working around, and and I'm shooting the six hour cross. Just got it in. Gonna have to send it back. That's cool. I'm okay with that because it did its Yours job. Yours worked. Mine worked. I, yeah. I did not. I shot. So before I left, 
I had about, I think, 107 rounds through it. So I shot it a lot. Oh, wow. You know, okay. so I was out on the range, you know, chrono in it, getting it right. Um, what a great gun for a running gun style hunt. Yeah. A 6.5 Creedmoor. Now, did you fold the stock or did you just leave it unfolded? Uh, left it. Left it. Yeah. I just left it. Yeah. I mean, because if I have to get on that gun really quick, I don't want to have to, like, because I haven't operated it enough. Yeah. It was such such a new platform for me that I just had left it locked in the um, go position, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so this buck, I'm paralleling it. This buck's 600 yards out. And I'm like, I think he's going to walk that ridge and the wind's right in my face the whole time. It was beautiful. So he's walking around and I'd lose sight of him. I'd pick him up and then I'd go, okay, I'm going to move over here. So I'd use the terrain, sneak in front of him. You know, I'd, I'd, I was always at least 100 to 150 yards in front of him Yeah. at all times. Uh, once he hit about the 400-yard mark, I was always about that distance. Yeah. I like Because I like to keep that distance because I know I can make that shot. 400-yard shot, not a problem. Could have made that shot. It's hunting, right? But you want to get close. If he's still working towards you, right. you're like, well, let's see what he does. Right, right. And you and said he wasn't... Chasing a doe or anything, so he's just kind of strolling he's through. He's just strolling through. Yeah. And he's not he's he's not in a hurry. He's just kind of doing his thing. Um, and lo and behold, I had set up, I set up and I was like, okay, I'm either gonna kill him in this hole, or I'm gonna kill him in that hole. If he takes this trail over here, I'm gonna kill him there. He goes over here, I'm gonna kill him there. Man, he walked right in front of me. Like, I don't know. I, I made all good decisions last week. I didn't make a wrong decision any hunt. It was crazy. I've never and had how, a and lucky how far trick. was he? Sixty yards. From six hundred to sixty. Yeah, sixty yards. Man, you really? How high did you have to hold over his back? <laughs> <laughs> no, you hold dead on him. I mean, and I was shooting the Sierra three. That was my first. Uh, that was my first go with an electro optic, and I learned some valuable things with that thing. If so, how they have it set up? This is I've the, the rangefinder system. Yep. So the rangefinder okay. talks to the scope. So once you range it, you have to keep ranging because I've figured out something. So if you, so if you range it, and this is what would be true on most platforms that say, okay, it'll automatically adjust. Right. Right. You've got to keep ranging. So if you click on three hundred and it says, okay, hold at this point. Well, if he closes that distance at 60... It's still it's still set to 300. It's still set to 300. Yeah. And I thought that out. So before he got to that point, I ranged the tree where I thought he was going to be. Okay. And it went back to the cross. Now, and here's a question for you. On the, the SIG BDX system, we have shot it. You range it. Then the light, there's a light with different dots going down. Mm -hmm. yes. And it says, this is your dot now. It's right. a lit up dot. But it still has the crosshairs that right. you could use to say, okay, I know my crosshairs are set at 100 or whatever. Yeah. Is that right? That's exactly right. Okay. And that's one of the nice things about the system. And I've got to get used to it because, um, you know, we're, we're look, typically we look at this Christmas tree type reticle, you know, on these long range optics mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And it's kind of different getting used to it. But they still have the crosshair there. Yeah. And you can still. I mean, even I think, if the thing turned off. There's still a crosshair. Still a crosshair. You can still yeah. use it. As long as you know, um, you know, and you can plug that into your, you can plug it into your phone. So if, like, for some odd reason your uh, rangefinder goes out and you've got your phone and you've got the BDX app up, you can type in, okay, 600 yards, and it'll say, you know, hold, like, 6 MOA or whatever right. it might be. So you've got, cool. you got fail safes, but, man, the buck was fantastic. Um, he was he was a large unit, um, but yeah, I was a little shocked when I walked up. I saw how good he was, but that's one of those that man, he just kind of keeps growing. Is so, Facebook still doing Facebooky things? Yeah, Facebook kicked us off, so the only people watching now are YouTubers. Yeah, which is cool. We, we love appreciate you guys. It. Yeah. Um, we we said we were going to talk about some deals, um, so you guys probably have heard us talk about it, but I'm going to talk about it again. Uh, Gun Dealio is our smartphone app, and it's also GunDealio.com. And um, folks behind the scenes here have been working their tails off, updating all the deals and promotions going on, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all that stuff. Yeah. So there are some deals to be had. 
And there's, you know, there are trusted websites that we do work with. Um, and I think that needs to be pointed out that we, we actually like. Um, so that's kind of where we shop, right? Right. Um, Euro Optic is a great one. Um, and Blade Optics HQ. Optics Planet has been Optics Planet killing has it. Been They've been amazing. doing some good deals. Blade HQ might be my favorite. Yeah. And I, so before the program started, I asked you, like, you know, you've got a thousand bucks. You have to go buy a deal. What are you going to go? Where? You, what off, What website are you going to go to? Right. We talked about AR500, mm -hmm. and there are great people over there. You can buy all this body armor, armor and, and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, but I think Blade HQ is actually probably one of the coolest ones. Uh, because I, I love knife stuff. I love like, knife. You can't have enough. No. And you can get on there, and some of the deals that they're running on some of their knives, you can buy, you know, great Kershaw blades for stocking stuffers. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, when you talk about, like, stocking stuffers or stuff like that, you're thinking, you know, spending somewhere between that $10 to $15 range. Right. And you can absolutely buy a actually really And it's decent handy blade. stuff that people are like, oh, cool. And, I mean, it doesn't matter... Pretty much anybody could, could use this stuff. Texas I mean, Huntsman's headed to Brownells. Uh, our editor, Michael, uh, cameraman, editor, producer, director. All around awesome guy. All around just <laughs> awesome guy. Um, his Michigan football team's having some problems, though. <laughs> but the Steelers are but doing good. But he's got Steelers, so. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. he said he's going to Palmetto State Armory, which is another good one. They, yeah, and they're all um, challenged with having stuff in stock and all that. But if you guys would just stop buying, you know, uh, all this stuff would get in stock again. So, or your grandma. My grandma went out and bought an AR and a shotgun and a pistol yeah. and a thousand rounds and nine. Where's all the ammo? Well, grandma doesn't usually buy ammo. So this is no. crazy. Uh, so, uh, okay. So I, I, I took Michael's advice. Uh -huh. So I've got a thousand bucks. I'm going to go over to Palmetto State Armory. They're running the AR-15 deals of Christmas okay. currently, and that's I can get a whole uh, PSA 16 inch 5.56 for 649 bucks. It's a build kit. It's a build kit. I mean, it, it's your it's, it's your dude. it's dude. It's your upper. <laughs> it's your that's, lower parts. You just need wait, you need your lower shut, receiver. Shut up. Dude, shut up, I'm going to buy it. <laughs> <It's not time. laughs> I wonder why your computer is having issues. <laughs> That's what I hear all day. I, I treat my computer like I treat my guns. I use them and oh, I abuse them. That's another good thing. Okay, so I swear, so the guy I went hunting with, Thomas Allen, love him to death. Like, beautiful guns and... We both agree guns are tools. Yes. I mean, I'm throwing them in the truck. And this is, he's like, he's like, is this your first time to hunt with that gun? I was like, yeah, it is. He goes, why are you throwing it around? I was like, it's a tool. And he, yeah. he was kind of like, oh, my gosh, what, what do you do with your other guns that you use a long time? I was the same thing. <laughs> Throw them in the truck, lay them on the ground. You know, what I does mean, he do? He kind of babies them. <laughs> This is Thomas brings like his his comfy seat and his air freshener oh, and his his relaxing. Music. We know those guys, and we and I give him a lot of I give him a lot of hell for it for being that high maintenance guy who has the pack that's just enormous and and big. But you know what? He owns. Need a tourniquet? It. I got it. Yeah. Need a barbecue? I, you, you know I got what? some. I, I got a little to, mini hibachi with to me. Ask him if he carries a tourniquet, and I would almost guarantee you he does not. He's got, I got six different flavors of jerky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he films this hunt. He does all this <laughs> stuff. So a f real quick funny story. So he's hunting with me in Oklahoma, and he tagged out on a great Oklahoma buck. That I would say the deer's probably pushing a little over six and a half years old. Like oh, my gosh, really? Old deer. Like we, uh, so like That's again, awesome. Again, another deer that I had no clue was there. And I hunted somewhere that I've never hunted before and just happened to make a right decision. Just awesome. I, I was lucky all week. And then, get this, my last set. So I was like, well, I'll go sit here where I haven't sat in four years. Guess what walks out in front of me? Probably about a 170-inch monster. Really? Giant. And you'd already shot your buck. Oh, yeah. yeah. I already shot my buck, and I didn't have my bow. He walks out 100 yards. 
100 yards. Just so. So I'll, I'll tell you a little bit of opposite hunting story for you from <laughs> about a week ago. I've got my duck boat with a little pop-up blind. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm getting out there. I'm going to do some duck hunting. <laughs> and I'm like, this. anybody want to come? No? Anyone? Well, it's a Monday. I'm like, yeah, I know it's Monday, but or whatever it was, yeah. Monday or Tuesday. So I'm like, when I could go. So uh, I'll just, well, you know what? I'm just going to go. I'm going to go out there by myself. And so it's fine. Put the boat in the water. This is public hunting land, too. <laughs> Put the boat in the water. we out there. I find a little spot. I got to the spot I wanted to be in. There was no one there. No one there. It was like, cool. This is going to work I, out. I, I, I realized quickly that I guess I've never hunted ducks by myself in a duck boat. I've hunted from P-Rose yeah. and little stuff, like small scale. Putting out decoys and running the tiller and putting out, oh shit, and then, oh, and then you have to turn around and then the wind's pushing you, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then when you have to pick up the decoys. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Oh good, I got one of the two dozen decoys in. Let me make another pass at Four it. hours later, <laughs> still picking up decoys. I think the guys that were 300 yards that way were probably like, look at this guy. <laughs> first time? <laughs> yeah, first time hunting. Oh God! I was so like, "So is that the same trip mm. that you had in Fisherman go through your?" Yes, same trip. <laughs> and by the way, did not shoot a duck. Um, saw, saw a couple ducks. It was it was kind of a slow. Uh, hold on a second. So you, so you're sitting there hunting, real sneaky like, and here comes a bass fisherman through. Oh yeah, or? these two old dudes. I can hear them like, "Yeah, Bob, how's it going?" Over? And they're they're just casting, you know. And no, I'm like, I, I hear a duck spread is a hell of a cover uh, I like, mean, for I, bass. I look over there, and they are not 30 yards from my from my blind. And I'm like, oh, what do you do? I stood up. I stood up. And they just kind of like pretended like I wasn't there. Like, don't look. Don't, <laughs> don't look. Don't, don't look. look. Don't look at he, he I wanted to do He wasn't going to shoot anything more, anyway. More uh, unfriendly things, but I didn't. It's oh. so like, let me take the high road here. Oh, that's, 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 you know what, but that is, you public never land, know, that's man. public land. It's you rough. You never know what you're going to get into. It's rough. Um, so yeah. what's going on on the YouTube? Because I'm looking at a blank, um, blank screen well, over here. Well, Ryan Weiss gave a lot of money to Olight during Black Friday, which they had, <laughs> yeah. they ran a lot of great deals. Like they, they, oof, they do some good work. Um, and then, uh, oh, so. Uh, Texas Huntsman makes a great point. Support local, support local, and he says, yes. uh, he says, you know what? With his thousand dollars, after rethinking it, that he'll probably go spend it local. Well, I like great. that. Yeah, I like that too. Sure. I like that too. Um, and then Ryan Weiss also says, there's nothing wrong with babying guns, which I agree. Like, there, but well, there's a point, right? I don't. It's it's a tool. Yes. I don't need to baby it. But I also don't want to damage it right. or make it not be sighted anymore. Right. Some crazy thing of like seriously, literally throwing yeah. it around. Um, so yeah, I mean, there is a point to be had with that. But on some guns, you like they're just not made to baby. Like my arrow, so I have an arrow precision build that I did up at Thunder Ranch uh, with the mm -hmm. arrow team, and that gun, I I, I want to see if I can break it. Like I was, there are those guns. I think that it's fun to like. Okay, you know, if it's a, I don't know, if it's a sixteen gauge Satori yeah. with beautiful wood, like you don't want to just throw no. that in the back of a pickup truck. No. But those are the ones that you take out when, like, I'm going to walk a field, yeah. and I'll, and I know I don't have to, you know, go in, yeah. use it as a paddle. Yeah. But like duck hunting, like I want a, a gun that I can use as a paddle. Yeah. Like not that I have to, but well, just in case. So where do you? So you you lie on the same side of the fence that I do with cleaning guns, and I know this is a big topic. Oh, oh God, cleaning uh, guns! How often do you clean your gun? Like this is like okay, we're done now. So well, we're, we're gonna throw this out there and. Leave I did it. recently borrow a gun from a friend, and if he's watching, I have cleaned that gun. But what? Because it's not my gun. Okay, it's not my gun. But cleaning guns. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not I, the best about so doing that. Got, I try to wipe it down. As far as cleaning out, the, the you yeah. know, taking it apart and doing a full deal. I just don't. Not that often. I don't. And they shoot great. 
I have, I have a, a Benelli Vinci that I've never cleaned, and it has well, that's, thousands of And that's of a really there. nice gun, so some people would be like, you're crazy, but it's also, I know Benelli, I've, I've kind of with guys who are saltwater marsh yeah. guides, and they're like, I don't clean it. And it will eventually rust and stop yeah, working. It will. After like four years, which is kind of impressive. Yeah. If the guy is hunting, you know, oh, every day of duck absolutely. season in salt water. Yeah. 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 It's I've got some guns that I I don't, but you know, obviously, uh, ah, Ryan Weiss says my self defense guns are always clean, and that's a good point. If I'm, tr I mean, you're trusting it with your life. Yeah, you that, should. Your life take care relies of it. upon that gun. And that's um, a good point. I got a, a buddy who's kind of new to, to shooting, although he's been shooting like weekly. He's shooting more than I am now. Um, and he takes it apart and cleans it after every single week. Range time. Every every range time. Yeah. And I'm like, really? <laughs> I mean, he doesn't have to do it, be that excessive about it, but you know what? He knows that gun inside and out. And he yeah, knows how good. to take it apart. He knows everything. But, yeah, you don't actually, because people also ask that, well, how often do I need to clean it and how thorough do I need to be? He's like, nah. I mean, just you need to lube it. Motor like if oil it's, out and just Like, Ryan, if it's your carry gun and it's a semi-auto, you definitely want to make sure it's functioning right, it's lubed up and all that kind of thing. Texas Huntsman says, Ryan likes babying his guns and the ducks, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a conservationist <laughs> when it comes to ducks. Uh, no, you're not. It's just it's public land hunting is tougher. Yeah, that's all it is. And and we, in down here in the deep south, we're still waiting for cold weather to push the ducks down. We had a little bit this morning, but it's not enough. Yeah, like it might get them to. Um, before we wrap this up, Georgia, you may have heard. I know you're tired of hearing it. Something going on. Um, there's something going on there. It is two Senate off Senate runoff elections. Um, the the election is going to happen on January 5th. They need your support. They need your help. Go to winred.com to donate. Do your part. Throw 50 bucks at them. Throw 20 bucks at them. Throw 10 bucks at them. Whatever you can do. Um, because if you don't, it's cool. You just get Kamala Harris deciding what happens in the country. And then when Joe Biden kicks it and then Kamala's in there. And then we get Nancy Pelosi as vice president. It'll be fine. Don't want to freak you out or anything. But get off your keister. And hey, get involved if you haven't yet. I think we should. I think we should kind of end with Texas Huntsman's uh, quote. Okay. He says, "Guns are like underwear, clean when needed." <laughs> <laughs> when needed. I, I change my underwear once a month, whether I need to or not. All right, that's it for us. See you later yeah. on Gun Talk Live. Thanks for watching Gun Talk Live. For more great gun content, subscribe to our YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages. You can always watch the Gun Talk channels on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon. And of course, you can always find us at guntalk.com. Thanks for watching.